Hey, uh, so we're going to look at another ETF. Uh, we have this one and one other before we complete the series on ETFs. Uh, so XLV, that's the healthcare sector. Again, another spider fund. Uh, there's not really any news, uh, but what we would do even without any news, um, I guess first let me say the last time we looked at this was on the 19th of March, so about three-ish weeks ago. It was at the time 125. It's gone up eight dollars, uh, and I had a buy point list at 125. I did not buy. I should have bought, but clearly I just didn't follow through on what I should have done. And the reason why I'm making such a stink about it right now is because this is one of the sectors that really does seem to grow just continually year after year and not just small amounts like other ETFs we've tracked. This one seems to grow pretty substantially and it's very um, consistent. So uh, we'll go through this one like any other one uh, see if we can find another buy point. I'm not sure if 133 is good enough for me today, but again, we'll look at the technical analysis uh, shortly. But before we do, uh, what I like to show is just the sector weighting, number one, and you can see 99%. I mean, really, 100% is in healthcare, which that's perfect. That's what we want. And then I just like to take a look at the top 10 holdings. For XLV, total assets, those top 10 make up 53% of this uh, ETF. Uh, the biggest ones being we have UNH, that's United Health Group, J&J, uh, &J, Johnson & Johnson, ABV, ABBV, uh, that's ABV, and what's the next biggest one? I think there's another one. Yeah, this is the only one over five. Uh, LLY, that's Eli Lilly and Company. And then I do see some other ones. I believe that's Merck, Pfizer. Um, not sure what that one is, but yeah, so it's a pretty good split. Uh, there's top four, you know, uh, United Health, that was nine, Johnson Johnson at eight. Uh, and then after those two, it falls to. Uh, Abby V, that's less than six, and then Eli Lilly, that's also less than six. Oh, Mark here, that's 553. Uh, so I did miss that one. But then after those five, then everything is. Oh no, here's a couple that are above four, but everything after those first five is less than 5%, which of course adds up if you all get them trending in the same way. But the point is, even those big positions they're less than 10%, the closest one's nine. Um, and so I just pulled up those top four. Uh, each one of these will have the one year chart uh, showing on the screen. So we have United Health, that's a very pricey stock from me at 500. You can see they've stayed flat. They do have a dividend of 1.29%. Uh, so, okay. We have Johnson & Johnson. They've gone slightly down in this year but they offer a higher dividend and it's a more reasonable price, 165. Abbey V seems relatively flat, but a dividend of 3.66%, that is pretty freaking good. Like I would get into this company just for the dividend alone. That's pretty high and it's at a decent price, 161. Looks like, again, relatively flat, so stable. Uh, the other one is Eli Lilly. This one, we're seeing growth. The other three, they weren't having this. It also has a dividend, very small percentage, but still. Eli Lilly might be the one. It, it's it's mid-range, you know, 300. That is getting pricey. Uh, but yeah, them and Abby V, those would be the two that I would consider first out of that entire list. But again, there's no news for this uh, particular sector, so... We're just going to jump into the technicals and right away uh, our chart has changed. Uh, I did save the original. Uh, so basically what we did is we just condensed the chart. 
Uh, we got rid of this long-term uptrend line of purple. And we also adjusted the still long-term trend, but not as long-term trend in yellow, which for this chart started in like late 2020 and projected out, you know, till today and beyond. And then the purple again, that was there to kind of show more or less forever. Like if this was the trend forever, but it seems to have broken that trend in the positive fashion going on the upside. And so we did change this. I did my best to simplify it. What I want to point out here is, uh, number one, this is going back to 2019. I, I hope it's somewhat visible here for us. Um, I can maybe, I think I need to fix this golden line a little bit, unless it's just like playing tricks on me. I'm not sure if it's quite parallel. It seems like it's going a little bit narrow up top. Uh, but anyways, uh, you can see from about 09 to 12, it had this nice little uptrend going here for a number of years. And I don't know what angle that would be, maybe like a 10, 10% incline. And then all of a sudden right in 2012 going into 2013, I don't know if there was like a revolutionary drug or something that was healthcare related, invented or added to the market or just changes in regulation. But all of a sudden in 2013, the very beginning, like literally January, of 2013 all the way up to about uh, mid 2020. So we had like a eight, roughly an eight year run where all of a sudden we saw a very consistent, and we'll zoom in a little bit here now. We saw a very consistent uptrend, uh, occasionally would go above. It was more likely to uh, outpace itself. You can see we had one long series where it did two, three, we'll count that as four, and five times where it was outpacing itself. And just, we could count this as one, and then two whenever the whole coronavirus situation happened. So it's most likely to outpace. And again, if we look at this, if I had to give that an angle, I would say now it's at maybe 15, between 15 and 20%, more so leaning towards 15% angle. And then all of a sudden in the more recent times from right around June of 2020 up until today, we are now seeing an even more accelerated uptrend. And this one, I probably put close to like a 45 degree, maybe like a 40 degree angle on this. So again, it's just continually growing. And whenever we checked, now I'll really zoom in. We caught this one right here like literally at the top of that green line at 125. And I'll zoom in a little bit more. We caught it right here. There was a chance for us to get in on this one right there. And I blew that one. I, I definitely regret this one. I, I should have targeted it more specifically, but um, oh well, there'll be plenty more out there. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, what was nice about this spot is not only did it break that golden trend, um, it was at what I would say was a consolidation period. So what happened more recently, it looks like it was outpacing itself for a number of quarters, going back to about April of 21, really until April of 22. Like it was, it set a whole new uptrend for itself, but then all of a sudden it pulled back. And so what I was seeing is from this period of July of 21, it seemed to be kind of just trading flat and again, that's because it, it was outpacing itself. So normal trend is down here. Well, it was up here. And then, you know, if we kept the original uptrend chart here, again, since it was outpacing, then all of a sudden it said, okay, let me get back into that range. And so it started trading like this. And now we're starting to see it kind of curve back into that normal uptrend. And so it just kind of like changed lanes in a sense. And so that's why we felt comfortable importing these horizontal green lines, blue lines, and red lines. There was a little bit of resistance here. And most likely it'll happen 
it could probably happen once more, twice more, uh, but as the weeks go on and it continues that uptrend, I really think it's just going to slice through it. Uh, no real worries there. Uh, so, in fact, I'm just going to remove that red line because, like I said, I think it's just going to flow right through it. The black line, we'll keep it there just for now. But again, I think it's just going to slice right through it. I expect to delete that line uh, probably by the end of the year. I think we'll pass that and just keep on flowing. Uh, but right now in the short term, I do want to keep this green line and blue line uh, just to kind of see how things go. I think there's definitely an opportunity for us to get it at 132. It's currently at 133, so not, not that far of a stretch. Uh, but ultimately, I think we can catch it in the high 120s. High 120s, possibly like 130. I think that's very reasonable if it all of a sudden were to stall out here for a week or two, pull back. I think that's very possible. Uh, not sure how high this one will go. It could go all the way up to 139 uh, the very next week. But if it were to, I would expect it to pull back. Um, so what I'm going to do is just kind of set this up. Um, so current price, 133. Uh, the buy point for me, I still like 125. Uh, looking ahead, what I would try to, what I would hope for is about 130. You know, 130 would be uh, decent. I feel like, again, it, the 130 mark should occur between now and June. So two months, will it touch back to that point? If it does, it's probably only going to happen once and hopefully we catch it. If not, uh, it may never come back that to that point again, based on what it's done over the past decade. Uh, so that said, we will continue to follow this one. I want to get into this one uh, sooner rather than later. Uh, resistance, we're going to have none there. Uh, and then the date, we'll have that. Long-term uptrend continues to accelerate um, I think another thing that I just want to mention I just want to look at uh, so we had that initial uptrend whoops where it lasted from 9 to 12 so three years then we had this one very long 12 to 20 so eight years and right now we're just in two years so uh, this uptrend should probably stay intact for a while and if anything it might pull back to a lower uptrend uh, again we'll continue to watch it but here's just a quick summary for us uh, so let me scroll over so this is XLV for the healthcare uh, sector currently it's at 133 uh, a buy point I would love to catch it at 125. If it were to pull back to 130, yeah, I would consider it. I, I think this is one that I'm actually gonna set an alert up on my Webull app and see if I can catch this one, um, or at least get notified. That way, I don't really have to watch it. They'll just tell me when it's at the point I want and I'll be set. Um, we don't have resistance point. Again, that's because the long-term uptrend. We put in the date, and then we just made a note that it's been in a long-term uptrend, and that continues to accelerate based on what we showed with those angles, how it just keeps steepening. And so we should see this continue for probably a number of years. But um, yeah, if you have any questions, uh, want to bring something up, by all means, let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to read that. Otherwise, Please like, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.